Most people in America are familiar with the fact that the Lord God above, of all creatures, great and small, gave us the rights and responsibility to look after the animals of the earth. The environment is a big deal in the political marketplace right now, and we are literally concerned with climate change. Climate change affects everything, from our waterways to our air and our skies. And openly, the truth is that we have a lot of people who we need to feed in America and around the world. And therefore, we have to really start to protect the farmer. I think that I told the story yesterday about the policeman, the lawman, who was pretending to be a farmer when he tried to play up and give me some money. But I declined him for a couple reasons. Because he wasn't sincere about wanting to provide me the income. And because the Lord God above said, no, you will not receive from him. Because it's unreal. The truth is that he walked off and he spoke in his little microphone in his ear, and that was clear enough to me. You see, some people can play in well and other people can't play in well at all. But today, my family friend Tamika, a rather large, uh, boisterous and voluptuous black woman, stopped by and with her constant line of, I couldn't find you anywhere, but hmm, hard to find me. You've seen my pack. But I don't mind that little polite lie because she's always kind. She always gives me a big hug, a big bear hug and then she gives me a little money. And what I do is consider what she's given me, and in the politeness, I return something to her family. Something that I really shouldn't have in the streets because it's really not an outdoor thing. Or something that I've made that's pretty because she's always kind to me. She's a pretty regular player in my life. I wouldn't consider a regular like some of the people who do monitor their customers in this way. But she has been a strong supporter of my ministry and I'm grateful every day. In life, we have moments of time to say thank you to people. My late father was a great proponent of helping people. Even into his retirement, he would write checks to total strangers in a way that you could see. He always had the book of our community of what is and isn't a legitimate charity. And he always reminded us of how important it was to give a little philanthropy. And I often struggle with that word, but maybe it's my stroke that does it all. But what I can tell you, that all creatures great and small deserve a little bit of love. So if you're in that community realm, when you see some of the little quackers, as I call, uh, roaming, roaming around, please don't hesitate to give them a little bit of crackers, because they do need a little extra, and it's not the most perfect thing for them, but there are other things that are worse for them, and there are other things they just don't like to eat. I'm making kind of a lay study of the geese in the area, and openly they're pretty neat. They can be a lot of fun, and they can react to you kind of like a dog does, which is sort of fun. But in life, we only have moments of time to do the right thing. And when we do the wrong thing, it misrepresents our community every day. When we do the right things, then we have an opportunity to play. But in life, God is always looking down from above. And because God is always looking down at us, he's questioning, what is it that you're doing today that's about love? What is it that you're doing today about your family? What is it that you're doing today about your loved one, the one that you lay with every day? What is it that you're doing in the effort of harming someone or helping someone? Because there are people who like to harm people. There are people that like to thieve from people like me, despite the fact that I'm homeless. Someone wants to take something that I have, and I just sit there and I look at them and go, Are you kidding me? You live in a home. You have a job with flowing income. And maybe you're living just above poverty, but the bottom line is you don't have any love. And because of that, you're stuck. A person like me is a priest, and therefore I have the three knots on my, as at this time, imaginary uh, rope belt, which is pretty straightforward. One of them is purity, one of them is poverty, and the last one is private for me. Until, of course, my love comes to me. But that makes me a little bit different than a Catholic priest. But still, in my faith, in my work, and in my ministry, I have the right to everything that I make, everything that God gives to me in my mind, in every creative work that I've ever made over time. The liars of the force, the stealers of sibling sets that took those creative arts are looking at a major problem when they face the pearly gates above. You see, God gives to people what he gives to people. And talent is something that we facilitate. And skills are something that we create over time. But intellectual property, creative work, musical adaptations, musical compositions, anything that's like that, any type of children's book, any type of lesson that works, all of that comes from God above. So your job is to make sure you're using your own talents and your own skills and not stealing from people like me their intellectual property because I promise you that at this time in this community, the right type of police are here. 
they are very much aware and they will take you to jail for your lies. It is the right time, America, for us to go after people who steal intellectual property and think they have the rights to do it. You don't. God is very displeased and that's why COVID is ravishing the earth.